In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So first of all, good morning. And second of all, the typo in the bulletin is my fault. I want to let everybody know that we do know that there are not two epistles to the Romans in Scripture. It's just the letter um, of Paul to the church in Rome. So, um, And that's my fault. Um, so around 1700, Jethro Tull, not the rock band by that name, but the agricultural pioneer developed the first horse-drawn seed drill that planted seeds in neat rows without much waste. So initially, the invention was met by many with skepticism and even hostility, since it did away with the usual method of planting, which was scattering the seeds by hand. But the hostility didn't last long. And now large-scale agriculture is almost completely mechanized. Most large farms are designed around efficiency and production volume. Moisture sensors in the soil signal when the crops need to be watered, saving up to 20% on water in some cases. Tractors have GPS systems that prevent doubling back over the same land or even missing some areas. This allows fertilizer or pesticide or seeds to be spread more evenly, saving up to 40% on fuel costs and supplies. Today's tractors can plant individual seeds with an accuracy of up to three centimeters. Modern farms are focused on efficiency and production. And that's why, although today's gospel reading may be about a sower and seeds and plants, it is not a lesson in agricultural management. Because the sower in this parable lets the seeds fall on the path, on rocky soil, amidst thorns, as well as on the good soil. The seeds fall on all alike. Most of us would call this impractical, even unwise or wasteful as far as farming practices go. What farmer in their right mind would scatter seeds in places that seem indifferent or even hostile to their survival? Places where the likelihood that the seed will take root is slim to none. Most farmers we know would be much more selective. But then this parable tells us more about the nature of God than it does about where to plant seeds. God is very much like the impractical sower in today's parable. God doesn't look at cost-benefit ratios or measure out blessings in terms of efficiency or reward. Instead, God loves the world with an excessive, abundant love that never stops to count the cost, never stops to observe boundaries. God's word and God's blessings are for all. Now, as members of the church, we typically try to place ourselves into one of the soil categories. And we typically place ourselves in the category of those who function as well-fertilized, rich soil. But if we're totally honest, we know that most of us have all the types of ground within us. And we produce variable results when the word of God falls on us. Sometimes we are like seeds sown on the path so frantic with all the expectations of the world placed upon us that we can't even hear what God is calling us to do or to be. Sometimes we're like seeds sown on rocky ground with a conviction that withers at the first sign of sacrifice. Sometimes we are like seeds sown among the thorns and fear prevents us from becoming the people God would have us to be. And then sometimes, sometimes, we are like seed sown on good soil, and we thrive and bear fruit and yield 30, 60, 100 fold. We become like the farmer. We love excessively, give generously, and share God's word without regard to labels or judgments, not trying to determine who is worthy of God's love or who bears the right label 
but sowing the love of God generously and without judgment, realizing that with God all things are possible, and who knows, but that all of us may have some good soil within us. I think of the times I have seen this good soil in all of you over the past six months. Filling up almost all the slots for a Habitat for Humanity workday. Never asking whether the family for whom the house is being built is worthy of benefiting from such a project. Giving food to families at Clayton Middle School. Knowing only that the need is there and that with Jesus, even a small quantity of fish and bread can become a feast. Helping families provide Christmas gifts to their children opening your doors each week to those on a journey of recovery, bringing hats, sunscreens, and more for farm workers, collecting diapers for families who have experienced domestic violence, doing all these things in the knowledge that we are all siblings, all children of God on whom God makes the sun to shine, the rain to pour, and yes, the seeds to fall. These times are when we are most truly being the church. It's important to remember that it's all pure grace, really. Those times when our minds, hearts, and actions reflect the purpose for which we were created, times when we open ourselves to the work of God in the world, when we find the courage to step outside of our own selves and risk actually living the gospel. It's pure grace when that happens. We know that we don't always bear witness to this extravagantly wasteful farmer, to this God of love. We are all a mixture of the different kinds of soil and ground. The pathway, the rocky soil, the soil full of thorns, and the good soil too. Thank goodness that God surrounds us with grace, with love, with the truth of the gospel, in all circumstances, all times, all places, and in all types of soil. Because the grace in this story lies in the fact that amidst all the varieties of soils that comprise our lives, somehow God can take our complex lives and make from them a bountiful harvest that can change the world. What a gift that is. As we go forward, may God's grace increase the good soil in us. May our works produce fruit in ways that we may not predict or measure or even be aware of. And may we bear witness to the God who loves without boundaries or limits or fear. Amen.